you tell us how you started to play the flute? Actually, I, I didn't start on the flute. I started on recorder and then ukulele in, in school, right? And then we had a string program, so I actually played viola for a while. And then I didn't, I didn't get to play flute until the band started. So it was basically high school band. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It was, you know, pick an instrument. I always wanted to try the flute, so I got to try the flute, and I was so excited about it. I, I went through really quickly. So, yeah, it was great. Excellent. Excellent. And then how long did you play the flute? So you played it from band and then did you go to university with it or? Um, yeah, I did. I went to Dalhousie and I graduated with a Bachelor of Flute Performance. Brilliant. Okay. So what made you decide to choose the flute out of all the other instruments that you that you had? Um, I really loved it. Yeah. Really it's just one it. of those one of those instruments that that makes you um, drawn to it. Well, I think when I picked it up, it was so easy, right? Mm -hmm. So I immediately felt like I had a voice through it. And I think that makes a difference. And I think I had a good teacher at the beginning that really set me up for finding that voice. So I think all that those helps. elements together gave me that connection and it's still there. So I'm very thrilled about it. Definitely, definitely. Who was your teacher? Um, well, I had Steve Peterson. So my high school band teacher um, convinced me to go for some lessons with this Steve Peterson. And so I took two lessons and it was right before the summer and then he taught at the band camp. And then after that, I just kept taking lessons with him. He was so much fun. And he never like said, oh, don't play that. He would be like, oh, you wanna play that? Go ahead. <laughs> cool, so there was no um, limitations. You were able to kind of do what you wanted and keep your passion. Um, yeah, and he was very involved in new music as well. So that was incredible. He was good friends with Bob Aiken, who used to come. And whenever Bob Aiken came to town, he would have these yeah. um, play in sessions at Steve's house because they were very much very involved in modern music. It was it was just incredible. That's awesome. Awesome. So was he your main teacher then from? From high school, yes, but he sent me on very quickly okay. so then that's when i found patty creighton and she was lovely too i yeah a wonderful cool. teacher as well yeah great she would send me on as well like she would say oh go here and take lessons with this person so she never ever like held me back that way you know you're my student type right right she was always like, oh go do this master class go study with this person take mm -hmm. some lessons with this person great so that was a real wonderful experience that's excellent. That's excellent. So from there, from your uh, flute performance in university, um, I'm guessing that you performed a lot. And you also in teach yes. and you, you um, conduct as well, right? Can you tell that us a little bit about that, that <laughs> journey? <laughs> yeah, that actually came later. But I was really um, grateful for the experiences I had in university. I did do the choral conducting course and that came in a lot of, ha very handy for like flute choir and everything. Absolutely. And Walter Kemp is a fabulous choral conductor and he was kind of the teacher of the course. So it was amazing. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so going back to your flute performance and taking um, flute, in university is there kind of a practice routine that you had been given or that you took from that and you keep doing um what is your kind of routine your your uh outline yeah that's a hard one i think if my teachers in university looked at my practice routine now they'd be like what are you doing because <laughs> in university it was very much long tones scales studies pieces mm -hmm. and now my practice time is so limited. So when I'm doing my long tones, I actually use snippets of my pieces. So I pick like the hardest section with like the most technical uh, finger work and I slow it down to like, you know, whole notes. And I just use that as like my long tone work, you know, connection between the notes, matching the notes and everything because I don't really have the time Right, that's a great idea. So if you're kind of strapped for time, then just go to the hardest part, pick that out and do it very, very slowly. 
like incredibly slowly incredibly like, slowly <laughs> yeah quarter notes become whole notes oh wow okay yeah just like you know so when you get to the note and you're switching you're thinking ahead and your fingers stay relaxed your breathing is in place already i don't know i find it really helpful cool so that's like muscle memory that you're um trying to gain yeah and tone that between the notes because oftentimes with technical passages you know the fingers don't quite land right or you know you crack the note a little bit because of the lip slur part of it right right yeah um do you have a tip or the the best kind of advice that somebody a mentor or a teacher has has taught you off the top of your head like um, anything that comes to mind I have this story I always tell my students because it's actually funny. So Patty sent me away to do this master class with Louis Moise and it was amazing. You go to New York and you spend two weeks um, studying wow. with him in these master classes. Yeah, he used to, he was wonderful. Oh he was older, goodness. he was settled, he didn't travel so much. So I, I went down there and so I'm doing Tafnel and Gobert for him because I wanted to work on my technique when I was there. Right. And we get to number three, and I think I had this whole pattern worked out where I would do like the sharps one day or the sharps in the duples and then the flats in the triplets and stuff like that. And he was the one that looked at me and said, what, I think you can do each of these in one breath. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, so 12 breaths is too much for you? <laughs> and it's just that when you think about it, you know, when you're doing these techniques, it, it's mm -hmm. almost you have to do them so much they become easy right so right. 12 breaths it's you know relax into it but do it do the full exercise right right yeah and use your breath and stretch yourself yep stretch yourself that's it right that makes a lot of sense yes yeah um okay so on to the next question uh, do you have a favorite type of flute or what is your favorite kind of flute to practice with or to play with? Oh, that's a hard question because <laughs> I have so many different flutes and each one has a different voice. So I actually have a keyless wooden flute mm -hmm. and I do play on that a lot because the wooden timbre of it, I love. And then I try to get that wooden timbre into my C flute. And wow. I pl play a lot of folk music, like I like to do session tunes and stuff like that. Yes. And so transferring that over into the flute and trying to get that rolled kind of woody sound mm -hmm. into a silver instrument is very lovely. Yeah, that sounds like a challenge to do. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it happens. It's like when you play the piccolo, you know, and the embouchure is different. And then you go to your flute and it sounds different. It's the same kind of thing. Okay, cool. And I also love to play the bass flute. The bass flute, yeah. Yeah, it's my baby. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, okay, the next question. Um, are you willing to share some performance advice? Um, yes, absolutely. I, I get nervous when I perform, but I find that the more prepared I am mentally, the better it goes. And the other thing is I try to reframe it. I never say I'm nervous. I say I'm excited, Smart. you know, and I always try to, to tell myself, you know, I want to be here. This is what I want. Positive. Yeah. And, and prepping yeah. yourself, kind of coaching yourself. Yeah. But I find if I say I'm excited, it feels different than if I say I'm nervous. That's a good tip. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So the last question is what is one thing that most people don't know about you? Yeah, that's the that ukulele. You did tell us that at the very beginning. So maybe that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, uh, I, I didn't start composing until recently. Oh, I composed nice. my whole life. I've always written music, but I only shared it. Um, over COVID actually. Is that right? Yeah. And then the first time I shared it, um, Larry Delahaye, who's a good friend of mine said, Oh my goodness, this is lovely. You should write more. So then I started dragging out these things and sharing them and just the reception was incredible. So I've been thrilled. Fantastic. That's really, really good. Is there a place that we can go to hear your compositions? Do you have it on? 
an MP4 or is it MP3 or MP4? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do have a YouTube channel and they're all flute choir compositions. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, my favorite piece is Pandemic because I wrote it during the pandemic. It's called Busy in Place and Sleepless Nights and it's written as a virtual flute choir piece. So it goes at 120 and the click stays the same all the way through the piece. But then the, the meter and the timbre and everything change. Cool. That's and awesome. Seems, okay, yeah, I'm that was quite fun. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to um, add your link to your YouTube underneath this. So I'm going to just go to it right away. Right? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's it uh, from us. And thank you again so much for doing this.